A powerful storm this week to bring blizzard conditions on top of potential severe weather, but by the middle of the month, new snow chances continue to rise for many across the United States. Welcome in, folks. Happy Wednesday, January 7th, and uh, continuing to track a bit of an active pattern. We've got a strong, uh, to, I would even consider a powerful mid-latitude cyclone this week that's going to definitely bring uh, some big impacts for many folks. And then I think the reason many of you are here, though, is for what's to come after that, and it looks like as I've been advertising for really about a week or so now, that by the middle of the month through the second half of January, uh, a much more favorable storm track for winter weather, potentially further east and further south, uh, looks to be on the rise. But obviously, uh, plenty to figure out. We'll talk about it all in today's video. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name's Gerald. I'm a meteorologist at WCCB Charlotte. If you haven't already, go ahead and like the video, subscribe, and hit the bell for the latest notifications. Doing all that is free. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything. All it does is help me continue to run this channel for free without any corporate interference. It's just me and you here, nobody else. Uh, and uh, I think that's the best way to do things right here on YouTube. And I'm excited to uh, have you here joining me. All right, let's go ahead and jump right on into it and start talking weather. Uh, the latest run here of our Canadian model from uh, this afternoon showing that uh, active pattern ahead. Uh, we've got uh, one storm system that starts right here at the beginning of the loop that flies on through. And then notice how after this, more storms continue to dive further south and try to ride up the eastern seaboard. That's what we'll be talking about for the second half of today's video. But before we get there, let's talk about what's going on out there right now and how that's going to lead to our uh, very active storm system over the coming days across much of the United States, especially the central United States up through the Midwest and the Northeast, but really everyone uh, just about east of the Rockies going to get a shot out of this one. All right, so here we go. We've got uh, in our water vapor loop, as you're seeing here, a low pressure developing, uh, or I shouldn't even say developing, it's been here for a while, but moving eastbound right now, crossing over Baja, California, and it's starting to work up through the four corners. That same storm will eventually, over the next week or so, uh, really over the next couple of days, honestly, it's probably a better way to describe it, take a track kind of right here like this, and it'll almost be two waves of this low pressure. It's going to break off one little piece that'll go first and then a second piece behind it. And that's going to produce winter weather and even blizzard uh, potential up here on the northern side of that track. And then on the southern side of things, uh, maybe even some severe weather down into the mid-south, the southeast, and uh, then some heavy wind and rain kind of in between up through the northeast. So this one, while it will not be as wintry for most people, it will still have an impact on, uh, on your forecast. So something you need to be pay, uh, paying attention to over the coming days. Let me show you the setup a little bit more in depth here on our mid-level vorticity map. And this map will be important later on in the video when we talk about the longer range as well. But just giving you a sneak peek out of this one, notice right here down south, that's our piece of energy tomorrow morning. See how it flies right up with that pathway that I kind of uh, noted, uh, or you'll see it load there. Here, let me uh, reload the page, it'll load even quicker. So you can see it there tomorrow morning, working through the four corners and flying up through the Midwest. And then here comes a secondary piece of energy that'll really get the main storm going by the weekend. And uh, you can see it gets uh, just eaten up uh, by this mid-level uh, closed off low, bringing plenty of spin and plenty of lift in the atmosphere as it works through the Midwest, the Northeast, and then into the Southeast and Mid-Atlantic by the start of uh, next week or more so the end of this weekend and the start of next week. That's the setup behind the system, but uh, you didn't come here for me to just tell you the setup. You want to know the impact. So let's go ahead, switch on over, take a look at the latest model runs, talk snow totals, wind gusts, and the severe weather potential. Well, as I alluded to, this one's going to kind of come in two waves, if you will. Here's the first one tomorrow morning on Thursday, uh, and the time above my head is in Eastern time. So if you live in the Central Time Zone, obviously subtract an hour, but at that point, uh, you know, you're being a little nitpicky, and uh, the model could be off by an hour anyway. So either way, the time above my head is going to be pretty accurate for uh, the Eastern half of the country. Here we go. The first wave developing, bringing heavy rain to parts of Eastern Kansas, down into Eastern Oklahoma, through the Red River Valley, into the Ozarks. And yeah, I think this first wave will have some winter weather associated with it, but really mostly into eastern Colorado, uh, potentially, although this model doesn't show it very well, parts of uh, western Kansas, the Texas and Oklahoma panhandles, especially the northern section there of those panhandles, uh, we could definitely see some winter weather. But this first shot going to really be more of a heavy, uh, heavy rain and wind event, and you can see a little bit of snow there even up towards the Twin Cities and into Wisconsin and the upper peninsula of Michigan. Then it keeps on moving east, and that one could bring a little bit of rain. This is Friday afternoon to parts of the Ohio Valley, 
And uh, even down further south, uh, could see some rain and definitely increased cloud cover down into the southeast out of this. Uh, but I think the severe weather threat relatively low with that first round. Then comes the second one. This one going to produce even higher chances of snow down into south uh, eastern Colorado there, or western Oklahoma through the panhandle there and the northern panhandle of uh, Texas down into parts of southwestern Kansas as well. And then this one going to have a higher severe weather threat. The reason for that is notice where the surface low pressure is here. This is early Saturday morning. It's right here near Memphis. Uh, the other system was up all the way near the Great Lakes. But the further south you go this time of year and you bring those kinematics with it or the wind shear that comes with the low pressure, you're closer to that Gulf moisture and instability. So that's why the second wave going to have a higher likelihood of producing uh, severe weather than the first one. Now, you keep it going a little bit deeper here. This is Saturday morning and then into Saturday afternoon. The storm system going to start to become a double-edged uh, sword here or a double threat as you've got uh, snow now breaking out across parts of the Midwest. And then you've got severe weather potential or at the very least thunderstorms down south. I'd say uh, probably Virginia south into North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia especially. And uh, you'll even see a further west from there going to have severe weather chances out of that storm system. I'll show you that in a second with a severe weather map. Then Saturday afternoon, this switches from a severe threat to more of a blizzard threat. Check it out. A deepening low pressure right over the Great Lakes. Snow breaking out into Wisconsin, uh, western Michigan, the northern mitten, into the upper peninsula, out here into east central Canada. Could get walloped pretty good with snow. Looks like a mainly all rain event into the northeast outside of the interior of New England, where this likely starts as a thump of winter weather. Uh, some snow, maybe some ice, uh, kind of that transition from snow to ice to rain, likely up there into parts of Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. But all rain for the I-95, Boston all the way south. Uh, just heavy rain, gusty winds out of this system. That being here, your Saturday into your Saturday night. Then we're waking up Sunday morning and things are starting to calm down for the majority of folks as the front itself pushes off so, uh, offshore, excuse me. Uh, but you've still got ongoing snow and lake effect enhanced snow up into the Great Lakes. And you see these blue lines here? Yeah, that's cold air funneling down south behind the system. And that could potentially set the stage for uh, a more active winter weather track by next week. And we'll talk about that, like I said, towards the end of the video. But first... Let's show you the snowfall totals, the wind gusts, and the severe weather map where the ingredients are overlapping uh, each other for that potential in this next segment. All right, starting with snowfall totals, I'll show you a couple models. We'll start with the blend here. So this is just all of the data thrown together and I think doing a pretty good job with this setup showing where some of the heaviest snowfall totals will be. First off, first place to get wild is pretty good outside of uh, the Sierra Nevadas and the Cascades and the other uh, mountains there of the Northern Rockies are going to be down into the front range of Colorado, uh, portions of uh, northeastern New Mexico. Then you can even see into western Oklahoma through the Panhandle, and then a bit of, of a swath up there through Kansas and Nebraska. But this does include Denver. Denver going to get good snow out of this. Uh, the high plains of Colorado, one of the more beautiful places I've traveled uh, over the past year or so. Uh, it's not a lot out there, but it makes it kind of beautiful, honestly. I can only imagine how it'll look with all the snow. Uh, so that's an area that's going to get it pretty good. Then the places that have been getting a lot of snow already this one winter up through uh, portions of Wisconsin, especially northern Michigan, through the Upper Peninsula, and then you can see the swath of snow right up through Canada. It's also where blizzard uh, potential will be the highest, especially the Upper Peninsula, the northern mitten there, and that little section of uh, northeastern Wisconsin that I have circled on the map. Outside of that, like I said, we could start with snow or get back in lake effect snow into parts of New York, uh, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. But even there, uh, at least it, the closer to the coast you are, likely going to change to rain. Uh, as that warm front pushes up and kind of erodes that warmer air. I'll show you the Euro ensembles and you look at it, yeah, it's pretty similar. So if you want, you can pause here and compare it to the last map, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and show you the GFS ensembles now. And yeah, pretty similar. So again, here's the European, here's the GFS, and here's the blend of models. The blend and the European are much closer, uh, just the way that the blend is coded. It kind of leans towards the Euro because the Euro has done better recently, uh, but even the GFS pretty close uh, in terms of similarities. What about wind gusts? Well, that's another thing we'll need to watch for. Obviously, if I'm forecasting blizzard light conditions at the very least, you're gonna have some winds that come with it. And um, sure enough, that first wave of energy going to produce gusty winds, check it out. 
50 to uh, plus mile an hour wind gusts going to be a possibility through Illinois, uh, Indiana, into Michigan, parts of Ohio. This would be for overnight tomorrow into Friday with round one. And then comes round two, and round two also going to have some gusty winds, probably on a broader scale. You can even see the mid-Atlantic and the southeast here uh, by Saturday and Sunday also uh, getting in on those gusty winds, and then through Sunday night into Monday and Monday afternoon remaining breezy before things calm down a little bit by early next week. The other thing with this system, that's the severe weather. Uh, This is the European ensembles plotting. Let's see, we've got uh, at least 500 uh, joules uh, per kilogram of cape. You've got uh, surface to mid-level wind shear of 40 knots, and then you've also got rain on the map. So if you have all those overlapping, it's a pretty good bet you're going to have at least the chance at some severe weather. Here we go. This is by uh, tomorrow for Thursday. Maybe a couple severe storms down through the Red River Valley. Uh, Could even try to stretch up into the Ozarks by tomorrow evening. Then for your Friday afternoon, chances bumping up down into Louisiana, East Texas. Don't sleep on this. Could even have some isolated tornadoes there Friday afternoon and evening. And then that stretches east here by Saturday afternoon. Atlanta down into Alabama, the Florida Panhandle. Could that stretch up into the Western Carolinas? Potentially. We'll watch the trends. And then by Sunday, severe weather starts to die on down and we can switch our focus back to winter weather. Speaking of it, let me show you the latest model trends from today and what I'm tracking that could produce higher snow chances for the second half of January. All right, we'll pick up on Monday morning of next week. So this is uh, only five or so days from now and give you the pattern uh, with our uh, latest European ensemble members and kind of looping it ahead and showing you why I think things are going to get pretty favorable or at least produce a lot of chances for a storm. And I mentioned this in yesterday's video. Uh, You have uh, four or five different chances uh, you're going to eventually hit or at least have a pretty good shot of hitting. It's like rolling the dice. If you roll the dice, uh, you know, six times, you're bound to land on a six eventually, right? So um, that's kind of the setup ahead. Now, like I said, picking up on Monday morning, a trough here over the Northeast, that's what uh, produced the storm I just showed you. That works on out of here, though. And uh, some, uh, I wouldn't say colder air funnels in, but some more average air tries to funnel in behind that. It's right here, though, that things get much more interesting. This is by around the 15th. And if you've been tuning in, the 15th is a date I've said uh, for a switch back to the more interesting side for a good week or so now. My changing has not changed, partially because the models have stayed pretty consistent. So I'm gaining confidence on this as we get closer. And uh, you'll even see some of those interesting model runs here in a second. But here's the setup. A big trough dips down into the eastern United States. And the more and more we go in terms of runs, in fact, I think I can go a couple old runs and the screen's going to flash here a couple times, so be advised on that. Uh, But I can show you how this has changed. All right, this was a couple runs ago. Newer, 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 and then current. The trend has been for this big trough to dig deeper and further west. That's a good thing if you want a big east coast storm. Uh, What this does is right here is your difluent side of the trough. That's where your upper level lift is. It's putting that more so over the eastern seaboard. That's basically where you want it is right along the coast. So you can get a surface low pressure to, well, take exactly that track right up the coast. Uh, At least that's favorable for most folks. Other folks, uh, you might want it a little more offshore than that or a little more inland than that. But either way, it's a good composite look for an East Coast storm. That's the first chance I see. You go further ahead and you can see it kind of stays there for a little while. And by the time we keep on going, folks, the cold air and the active storm track looks to hold. A little bit of a southeast ridge tries to build in. But I'll be honest, so far this winter, the models have overdone these southeast ridges, which is interesting because normally it's the other way around. But check out what it's doing. It's spiking a big ridge up into Alaska. And that's just going to allow a big transport of northern stream energy further south. And uh, that combined with uh, some southern stream energy, which uh, looks to be more uh, easy to come by than it has the rest of this winter, could be a really good combination if it holds. And it's held for you know multiple days now in the modeling, so that's definitely uh, a good sign. Um, I will quickly show you this. Uh, this is the European AI model. It's the same map, but I just want to show you what an operational run looks like. And it agrees by about a week or so from now, you get that big trough dip into the eastern United States. That could produce something. And then you can see it keeps sending more pieces. Here's another piece of energy, another piece of energy, another piece of energy. So the look is good. Like I said, you put a bunch of chances together, the odds increase that you hit on one. Let me show you some operational runs from today that show how this potential uh, could unfold with a pattern like this. And uh, we'll even throw in a couple fantasy runs in there, although we will definitely add some context uh, before giving you that raw data. 
All right, well, I told you this map would come back in handy eventually, and here we are. We've got uh, the Vorticity map again here at the mid-levels, and uh, once more, I'm going to pick up uh, where we kind of left off right around this coming Monday. So here we go. You can see all the Vorticity over the eastern United States. That's the storm system that's working through this weekend. Once that gets out of here, we're expecting that big trough to dive down, and guess what? Here it is. You can start to see that northern stream energy on the latest European model here uh, diving southbound and uh, working right through the Mississippi River and then trying to work up the East Coast. Now, what we need is we need this to slow down and uh, spin up more. Right now, as it's diving south, it's very positively tilted. See how uh, kind of the orientation of the troughing is in that manner that I have drawn out? That is in a positive tilt, and that means that uh, it's just going to have less lift associated with it, basically. If it was tilted the other way negatively, or maybe I'm messing up my mirror view here with the camera, but either way, if it was the other way than what I have drawn here, uh, then there would be a lot more upper level diffluence, and that would really help to kick up uh, the rising motion, and it's easier to get low pressure when you have that happen. That's one con here with this setup, but it's a great look in terms of where the trough is diving down. And again, this is uh, about a week plus out, so plenty of time to trend better, and of course could trend worse. Then this is what I said with, this isn't it folks, notice another big trough dives down after that, and then another trough, although not as far south, and you kind of get the idea, there's multiple chances, you got one big trough there, and then another trough the other way, and plenty to figure out. What I will say though, is you're starting to get some of these fantasy runs to show up in the models, uh, the afternoon GFS is one of them, and I will immediately start with giving you context here. This is one operational model. This is not a forecast. What this is, is the pattern that I'm watching ahead. So do not look at this and look at specifics. If you see snow or ice and uh, a place like Charlotte, for example, do not uh, run and tell everyone that Gerald said it's going to snow in Charlotte on whatever date the map says. Again, this is just a pattern that we're talking about. And uh, these are the general storm tracks it can bring. But we know here in the southeast especially that uh, rain, snow lines and all that don't come until you're two or three days in advance. Right now, we're just sniffing out the pattern. All right, here we go. There's the big trough that I mentioned. Notice kicking up some snow with it, uh, especially down uh, from the Smokies northbound. This would be the first northwest flow event in a place like North Carolina in quite some time. Uh, so we'll take it, switching back to the wintry side, maybe even some snow showers and such in other places. Look what starts to happen, though. Uh, you start to get some coastal energy to fire up here. Uh, see how you've got all this rain in here and low pressure kind of right here. So even with a positive tilt to this trough, it's still trying to show a coastal storm, but because it's positive and not negative, it's a little too progressive to get your big classic nor'easter, but it's not too far off. I will give you that. It's not too far off. If that doesn't do it though, then check it out. Uh, here comes more Northern Stream energy, and uh, that too, it just fades a little too soon to get something big, but eventually on the GFS run from this afternoon, way out down the road, this is around the 20th or so of January, but remember, just watching the 15th to the end of the month, that's the time frame, don't take the 20th exactly as a day, uh, but uh, you can see that signal, that cold air diving south and an active southern uh, stream of energy could get things going. The European model, that was the GFS, but I didn't say so. Uh, this is the European, and here we go. Here's that big trough, and yeah, there's the coastal storm just moving a little too quick and not getting quite enough upper-level support to get a big snowstorm out of it. But then look, it tries to do it again. Another little coastal flare up there, uh, working from the southeast to the northeast. Then right here, what's that? Another little piece that tries to get going, and uh, that trend just keeps on coming of an active southern stream and an active northern stream. All you need them to do is uh, link up. I always make uh, dating jokes out of this. It's like they're both at the bar playing eye tag. You just need one of them to make a move and go link up, and you've got a storm. It's basically the pattern that we're working with from the 15th on. Now, I cannot guarantee you that we will get that big storm, but what I can say is the more chances you throw at it and you know you do it you know, over and over for 15 days, odds are at least somebody's going to get that to happen uh, eventually. So that's, uh, that's what I'm watching here for the second half of January, and we're already a week into the month, so uh, you know, I'm feeling pretty optimistic about um, uh, the second half of the month here. Alrighty, folks, that's all I've got for you on this uh, Wednesday. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Um, and that's, uh, that's all I've got for you. So y'all have a great one. Stay safe out there and I'll see you all next time.